Sony have even stated that they believe one in every five parents have a PlayStation. Video games have historically been aimed at children's consoles and games like the Atari and Pac-Man. But as decades have passed, players have grown up and out of basic games, and the gaming industry has had to adapt. As Adorno states, goods are produced for the market and aimed at the market to make profit and to survive. This uh. resulted in games beginning to involve adult themes such as violence, guns, gore, sex and nudity. Viewing or taking part in any of these films in real life would be considered transgressive which seems to be accepted to exist in video games. The pornography under examine video games are transgressive and even produce transgressive behaviour. Video games expand the classic pictures of classic society, and this is naturally the main occasion for which these are produced. Paul describes in his description the finely shaped characters who were the news of the land when he ran a kid, and this was allowed for only basic gameplay and graphics. As a result, most gamers treat the concerns of violence as shooting spaceships and eating dirt. It would have been a technological miracle if game developers were able to make classic video games such as Big Dug and score through to make sequels. Paul stated that games today are in a state of being aimed at adults, and this is down to the changing demographic of gamers. As the first generation grew up, the door opened for a growth in the content to match. An ESA report shows that the average age of gamers in 2016 was 35. This is a large increase from 2000's average of 21, which itself was on the rise at the time. Paul describes modern video games as superbly detailed in their animation of blood and gore, and this can be seen greatly in the death animations between Pac-Man and The Last of Us. Or throughout the span of the Tomb Raider series. <laughs> Games have adopted video nasties to attract older gamers, with violence and gore seemingly plastered into most. Grossman likens video games to AIDS that infect a society, as he believes that violent video games create violent people. Video games are a disease on our society, promoting transgression through interaction in it. Video games are special and different to films and books, in that players are acting out the transgressive acts instead of simply reading about them or watching them. This caused Hansen and many others to link a 1999 school shooting to the killer's video game use, stating that because of his obsession with video games, he had turned himself into an excellent marksman. Video games have long been associated with causing violence, be that a person in their own room getting angry at a game, or crimes and transgression in wider society. In recent years, transgressive video games have been blamed for criminal activity, such as the actions of Norwegian terrorist Anders Breivik and 2018's Florida school shooting. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin and US Representative Brian Mask claimed that the video game Call of Duty was the cause, stating that it was no wonder that people were becoming desensitised to killings. However, being desensitised is nothing new. News shows, newspapers, violent films and violent books can all be argued to have the same effect. It is also a large jump to claim that desensitisation of transgressive acts causes them. I would claim that I have become desensitised to death due to films, video games and often publicised acts of murder and death on the news and in newspapers, but this does not mean that I would go out to kill someone because of it. Morals are not lost due to video games. People are morally transgressive enough before they turn on the game with there being around 1.8 billion gamers in 2016, according to the ESA, it is safe to assume that most of these people have not committed a school shooting or any other violent crime. So what makes a person transgressive? This is up for debate, but video games are not the cause. However, whilst video games do not cause an issue of transgressive behaviour, they do emphasise it. Andres Brevik did not decide to create a terrorist attack because of video games, but he did train himself on them. 
video games have the potential to lead people on the border of acting transgressive to becoming transgressive. This can be seen in the idea of microtransactions, which are in-game purchases usually done with a random number generator system, where players can pay real money to get in-game items. This recent inclusion into video game culture can be seen as a link to gambling. The issue that arises from this is that unlike regulated gambling, there is no age barrier to stop young people or people with addictive natures from spending their money, with many stories circulating about children using their parents' credit card to purchase microtransactions and stack up massive debts. Video game microtransactions are not the cause of people having addictive natures or people spending money, but they do provide a platform for them to do so. Video games show no sign of stopping this transgressive behaviour. With the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2 in November 2017, fans and many politicians created an uproar about the game's emphasis on microtransactions and gambling of real money. US states, such as Hawaii, attempted to make the existence of microtransactions in a game regulated and put under the same category of gambling expected in a casino. In the UK, Parliament discussed the same matter due to an online petition attracting enough signatures. However, this did not amount to any laws being placed, and microtransactions have been left to persist at attracting transgressive behaviour from addictive natured people. Therefore, it can be said that video games are not the cause of transgressive natures, but they do definitely emphasise it. Video games act as a platform to practice transgression for some people, such as terrorists training on Call of Duty or gamblers getting their fix on microtransactions in FIFA. But they can also act as a way for transgressive people to vent their acts without having to face real world consequences. With video games acting almost as a social control over people, preventing them from committing the crimes that they have vented up in real life, and instead encourage them to express themselves virtually. However, there has been no conclusive argument or research for either perspective on violent video games brooding violence. As Kuttner and Olson 2008 explain, too many of the studies were poorly designed or bore little relevance to the real world. Perhaps most important, almost nobody had bothered talking to the children. The study of video game transgression is incomplete and so far, as Dylan Dill put it, precious few true experiments have been done to assess the effects of playing violent video games on aggression related outcomes. And so, it can be said that transgressive video games To conclude, video games are transgressive in content, such as violence and gambling, but there is no evidence to say that it creates a transgressive person. This research in the area is severely lacking and to label a video game as a cause for transgressive behaviour would be an assumption. In summary, it can only be concluded that video games allow for transgressive behaviour.